Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have committed abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all the workers of wickedness not know, who eat up my people as they eat bread, and do not call upon the Lord? There they are in great dread, for God is with the righteous generation. You would put to shame the counsel of the afflicted, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that salvation, the salvation of Israel, would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his captive people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel will be glad. So what we have here is a snapshot from God's perspective of humanity's need for the gospel. And he starts out by saying here that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So a minute ago, that's why I'm kind of wiping the sweat off of my my brow from the uh, from the curse of Adam as my kids and I were working in the yard. I'm out there with my kids and we were talking about the nature of humanity. Are people basically good or not? And I knew that it was time to record the Psalm 14 devotion. And so I'm like, I got to run in there and just record this real quick because the gospel is here. And so as I got to gospel my kids with it, now I'll gospel you with this. David says in this Psalm, no, the, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And that's a pretty good description of all of the world. Right, and this isn't just David in a rut, you know, in, in some kind of lamenting mode, saying, "All right, I guess everybody's going to hell." No, he's really saying here, like everybody's going to hell. He starts out with, you know, the fool has said in his heart. I want to be careful to to explain that because that doesn't mean that if you don't believe in God, you're just a hopeless idiot. It's not what he's saying. A fool is not somebody who's like intellectually deficient. Okay, somebody who's dumber than the next guy. The fool is somebody who rejects available information because it doesn't fit his preferred narrative. Like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, I just don't like it, and so I choose not to believe it. That's not not my truth. That's fine for you if it works for you, but that's not me, right? You say there's a God, not my thing. That's foolishness. And so the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Why? Because he rejects the knowledge that we all are born with. Solomon says that he's written eternity into our hearts. And Paul says that the attributes of God are clearly known by what he has made. So we look around and we look in the mirror and we look at ourselves and we know that we don't exist for ourselves. And we've got this kind of inherent knowledge, however we would put it, different words, but, you know, that we, we owe somebody a life, you know. God just made us that way. He made us to believe in him. He made us to give thanks to him. But we don't do it. Why? Because we're foolish. Not just the people that David was dealing with. Who? Everybody. Look at verse, you know, uh, verse one. There is no one who does good. He repeats it in verse three. There is no one who does good. Not even one. Most translations will say, no, not one. Why? Because verse two. God can't find anybody, seemingly, Right? Who seeks after God. Verse 4. They don't call upon the Lord. Right? So this is the human problem. And David here says this. And then Paul picks it up in Romans 1 and specifically Romans 3 where he quotes this exact passage. And he says that's all of humanity. Not just the people that David was dealing with and that were frustrating him. All of humanity has turned away from God. This is a problem. This means that people are lost until they have the gospel. This means that we can't assume that everybody's good, that it's all going to pan out in the end and just everybody will be saved because God is nice. God is only nice to his children. To everybody else, to his enemies, he's a judge. And they're lost and they're separated from him because they've denied him. And they don't seek after him. So what's the solution to this? Well, Paul gives us the answer in all of Romans, right? As he just explains how God has solved our God problem. But what David says here, verse 7, Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. Zion is another word for, you know, Jerusalem or sometimes meaning just all of Israel in general. So he's saying here, if God would do something in Israel that would solve all of humanity's God problem, then, the end of the psalm, Jacob will rejoice, Israel will be glad. Has God done that? Right? Has, Has God done something in Israel that has spread out from Israel and solved all of humanity's problem of enmity with God? He has, and his name is Jesus, right? Because Jesus was born in Israel, and then his name itself, Jesus, Yeshua, it means God saves, or the salvation of 
God. And now we get to take Jesus all over the world on, on mission and say, all who call upon the name of the Lord, that's Jesus, will be saved. There's no other name under heaven by which men must be saved. And so this is a snapshot, essentially, of the problem and solution of the gospel, the bad news that leads into the good news in poetic form delivered through David from God's perspective. Everybody has turned away from God. We are all responsible for that because it is foolishness and it's voluntary, right? We turn away not just by nature, also by choice. Even if Adam didn't sin, we would have. Why? Because we have, at some point in our lives, before we came to Christ, rejected the knowledge of God. And that's our natural state. And we kind of like it most of the time. So, that's the problem. But the solution is that God has done something in Israel that will have the effect of redeeming and cleansing the world. His name is Jesus, and more people need him so that they can be pulled out of this darkness and this ignorance of God. And we've been given the tools to help with that, right? So Psalm, uh, Psalm 14 ends up being good news by the time you get to verse 7. If we stop after the bad news, we're all going to hell. But God has done something. Verses 6 and 7.